Hey, 42 here. Throughout history, there have only been two instances of a nuclear bomb being used on a human population, both at the end of World War II, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. 225,000 people died as a result of just two explosions from the deadliest weapons that man has ever created. But modern nuclear weapons make Little Boy 18 kilotons and the more powerful Fat Man 23 kilotons seem frightfully lame. Modern nuclear weaponry is anywhere from 80 to 3,000 times more powerful than Fat Man. So, what would happen in the minutes and hours after a nuclear weapon launch? What would you hear and see? How would the government react? I will be using the United Kingdom as the missile target for this hypothetical doomsday scenario because there is more information publicly available about the UK's planned nuclear missile response than any other country. But the response of the British government and what British citizens would experience is going to be remarkably similar to any other developed nation. Let's say North Korea launches a single ICBM or intercontinental ballistic missile directly towards London, as Kim Jong-un now claims he has the capability to do so. Nukes travel at approximately 4 miles per second once they reach full speed. It would take roughly 40 minutes, give or take a few minutes, depending on the nuke and other factors for it to reach London. But it wouldn't take 40 minutes for London to find out that certain death is heading their way. There are a multitude of early warning systems in place. If you travel by car from York to the coastal town of Whitby, which I highly recommend by the way, you will pass through the stunning yet bleak North York Moors. For miles on end, you will come across nothing but eerily quiet, mossy and heather speckled tundra in every direction. But at one point you will spot an enormous alien-like structure on the horizon. This is RAF Filingdales, a top secret military base that has the official motto, Vigilamus, which means we are watching. I have a weird obsession with secret military bases and this is one of my all time favourites. It looks like it was plucked directly out of the depths of the Cold War or some old spy movie. Nobody knows everything that goes on at RAF Filingdales, but it is Britain's primary ballistic missile early warning system. Built in the 60s during the Cold War, it forms part of the US and UK's combined early warning system. Along with other bases, this interlinked network shares up to the second intelligence between both powers and forms an early warning system covering millions of square miles. Filingdale's solid state phased array pyramid setup can detect missiles, satellites and pretty much any other flying object within a 5,600 km range in all directions. But if we were to rely on Filingdale's alone, we would need to wait for a North Korean missile to reach Europe before it could be detected, leaving Britain with less than 15 minutes to prepare and respond. But the missile would pass through the territory of several other NATO allies who would hopefully give us some warning. Because of the trajectory of an ICBM, the first NATO ally such a missile would cross is Norway. On a tiny Norwegian island called Vardo, there is actually a radar station occupied by the US that keeps tabs on Russia, but could also detect a missile from Asia. However, there is one more missile warning system that would give the UK a much faster heads up. Satellites. Hundreds of US operated satellites orbiting Earth could detect the extremely high heat signature of an ICBM in as little as 30 seconds after its launch from North Korea. As soon as the US knows about the missile it would very likely and hopefully alert Downing Street. So the British government could be alerted to the impending missile strike in as little as 1-2 to two minutes after its launch. But even with satellites, bases such as Filingdales and Vardo are still very useful as they allow much more precise tracking of the missile as it arced through its many thousand mile trajectory at blazing speed. This much more granular tracking data would be used for missile defence systems which we'll discuss near the end of the video. A likely best case scenario is that Britain has roughly a 20 to 25 minute window to react to a North Korean missile. Little is known about what military response would be taken by the UK and US to such an attack because 
it's obviously top secret. But we do have an idea of what information and guidance would be delivered to the general public and how. During the Cold War, people infamously had a four minute warning to an impending nuclear attack. Modern technology allows for a little longer than that, but not much. Realistically, by the time the public are warned of the attack by the government, there would be 10 to 15 minutes until a nuke hits. During the Cold War, the UK government planned to use the wartime broadcasting service to broadcast a short message. All radio transmissions would be interrupted and every TV would automatically switch on and transmit the message to reach as many homes as possible. But the wartime broadcasting service was shut down in the 90s. Today, it is easier but still challenging to deliver a warning to every citizen within minutes. The government has the ability to send a text message to every mobile phone in the UK at the very same time. So this would most likely be the first port of call. Obviously, upon receiving a text message that a nuclear missile is on its way, the first thing that everyone would want to do is contact someone else. So, to prevent the telephone network from being flooded and freezing up, the British government would first restrict access to all base transceiver stations. This would put every phone in the country into receive only mode. Your mobile would be able to receive calls and text messages, but unable to send any. This way, the government could reliably send further instructions every few minutes. What would those instructions be? Well, they haven't actually changed much since the days of the four minute warning. The government would likely instruct everyone to get to the most central location within their house, usually on the stairs. This way there will be the most amount of dense material between you and the deadly radioactive fallout outside. A 150 kiloton nuclear bomb, like the kind that North Korea are suspected to possess, has the potential to instantly spread deadly radiation in a 5 kilometer radius, which could prove fatal to over a million people in a city such as London. That death toll would be severely reduced if everyone took cover between a few brick walls. Matter absorbs radiation. A house is not going to stop you receiving a potentially deadly dose of radiation, but the more matter between you and the radiation, the better, and the more likely you are to survive because your body will absorb much less of it. However, those within a 0.6 km radius of the blast site will be instantly vaporized by the huge fireball resulting from the bomb, as will everything else. Every single thing inside this area, it doesn't matter how thick those people's walls are, and those within 1.2 kilometers of the blast don't stand much chance either. The bomb will create an immense air blast that will instantly kill almost 100% of people and level every single building within that radius. For those slightly further away from the bomb who have taken shelter in the centre of their houses, they will need to wait at least two days in the same spot. That's roughly the time it takes for outside radiation levels to die down, to a level that wouldn't cause a gruesome death within a few hours from just minutes of exposure. Radioactive fallout would be carried by the wind hundreds of miles from the blast site, so people all over the country would be advised to stay inside and make do for as long as possible before going outside. After two weeks, the atmospheric radiation levels would have dropped to 1% of their initial level. It would be advised to not step foot outside for at least that long. The government will likely advise everyone to wash their hair as soon as possible after the blast using shampoo to remove radiation that has clung onto it. Though there will also be a warning not to use conditioner, because conditioner actually causes radiation to bind to hair. The advice would also suggest removing contaminated clothing and placing it somewhere away from you and your family. Doing this can remove as much as 90% of the radiation on your person. It would also be wise to wash often if possible. Whilst all this is going on, what would the government be doing? Hiding in a top secret bunker of course, although it isn't all that secret. Before the missile hits, all those responsible for coordinating the country's response, the Prime Minister, senior military personnel and cabinet ministers would move into the UK's crisis management bunker 
It's underneath Whitehall, and it's codenamed Pindar, after an ancient Greek poet of the same name whose house stayed standing whilst the rest of his city was reduced to rubble. Pindar is a huge underground complex that can house and sustain hundreds of people. It reportedly has a network of tunnels that go underneath and have access to Whitehall, Downing Street, the BT Tower and Buckingham Palace. There are discreet unmarked doors all over London that provide access to Pindar. From inside Pindar, the Prime Minister would be able to contact the Trident Nuclear Submarine Control Centre to authorise a retaliatory strike. But how will the officials inside Pindar know when and if it's safe to come out? By listening to the radio, of course. Yes, even in 2020. That is the official protocol for the government to follow if sequestered inside a nuclear bunker. Specifically, the government will tune into BBC Radio 4's Today programme every day for three days. Since in the event of a nuclear attack, Radio 4's Today programme would be broadcast from the top secret Wood Norton underground bunker. It is safe to assume that if it stops broadcasting after three days, then Britain has fallen. It's estimated that if a nuclear warhead hit London, it would kill over half a million people and injure another million. But would it have to come to this? If a single nuke was fired at Britain, would it face certain annihilation? It's difficult to say. But there are systems in place that could come to our rescue. Together, the US and NATO have a comprehensive network of missile defence systems placed in key locations around the world. Their effective areas overlap to provide full coverage across Asia, Europe and North America. Most are manufactured by defence contractors Raytheon. There are a few different systems currently in use, but they all act pretty much in the same manner. First, satellites detect the missile within a few minutes of its launch and send its location to a command centre somewhere in Europe or America. The command centre then instructs the closest radar to the missile to track its precise trajectory and speed. This information is rapidly relayed to one of the many military bases where the missile defence systems are installed and permanently on standby. One or more ballistic missiles will be fired directly towards the enemy nuke with incredible precision. It takes a lot of technology and mathematics to hit an object the size of a small car travelling through the upper atmosphere at 4 miles per second. At the very last moment, the ballistic missile detaches and launches an explosive payload into the nuke, hopefully detonating it at an altitude that is going to cause minimal harm to human lives. The issue with missile defence systems is that they are far from foolproof. No anti-missile defence system in existence is guaranteed to neutralise every hostile missile. And because of the immense power of a single nuke, all it takes is one to slip through the net, and millions could die. Also, foreign powers such as Russia and China have supposedly developed anti-anti-nuclear missile defence systems to throw a cloak of Soviet concealment and confusion over NATO's precise eyes. Such systems, known as penetration aids, usually involve launching several decoy missiles alongside the real one or the use of a single missile containing multiple explosive payloads, called an MIRV, so that the anti-missile defence systems don't know which one to hit and are overwhelmed, or run out of ballistic missile reserves. Although it may be interesting to postulate about this scenario, we should all hope that it never comes to fruition, because if nukes are ever used again against people, they will probably be humanity's darkest and potentially final days. Thanks for watching. I've recently launched my first book, which I'm crowdfunding through Unbound Publishing. It's called Stick a Flag in It, A Thousand Years of Bizarre History from Britain and Beyond. If you would like to get your hands on a first edition signed copy, then head on over to Unbound, the link's in the description, and pledge today. Thank you.